Hi and welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. My name is Anton Monson and today we are doing this. A swivelable mount for my speaker. So to achieve this we will be using three different technologies. First of all we are going to do some 3D scanning which is a bit overkill but I think it's pretty fun and we need the profile to be able to design our part around both the speaker but also the screen. Next we will design all the parts in Fusion 360. I'm not going to show you all the different steps but I'm, you're, you're going to see roughly what we're doing. And the last and final step is of course to 3D print it all using the BCN 3D Sigma R19. So let's get started. Today's sponsor is Padmate, who makes epic wireless earbuds like these, the Pamu Slide Mini, that you can find in the link down below. The Pamu Slide Mini is a great looking and more importantly, great sounding earbuds with fantastic sound and bass. With it, you get up to 30 hours of battery, 10 hours in earbuds, and up to 20 hours more by charging the earbuds in the included wireless case. The case offers a full charge in one and a half hours and can itself be quick charged via USB-C or via Qi wireless charging. With IP6 waterproof classification and the perfect fit inside ears, it really makes for effortless experience. With great sound isolation, you can make sure that you hear the music instead of the world outside. You also get auto pairing via Bluetooth 5. Get your own Pamus Light Mini in the link down below. For scanning, we'll be using the Black Box Cat 1 3 scanner that I reviewed before. It's a simple, cheap scanner. So you target it at the background. It will then produce a uh, pattern that the two cameras will detect. It looks just like this. The problem is that that black pattern is really hard to target. So you see here we can't really scan anything. I'm only scanning the connectors. So to scan really dark and shiny surfaces like the back of the screen we'll have to using a contrast spray. So this is a spray that you can spray on your surface. You can see it creates a white matte surface. It's much easier to scan. This particular one I have to scrape away on the markers and then when we do the next scan you can see it's already better. We're getting a surface. So if you do a few of these scans you will be able to build up a surface. You see here that I'm targeting more and more scans. It's all sped up of course. So after that the computer will process it a little bit and we get a mesh that we can then export and open up in Fusion 360. Inside Fusion 360 it's actually really simple. All I'm doing is that I'm importing the different mesh files. So you see here, here we have the screen mesh. Then we also take in the uh, speaker mesh. And I just place them roughly near where I want the position. And from there it's easy to start to draw, do some details. And uh, yeah, and basically what I'm doing here is that I'm targeting one of the screw holes. I'm just making sure that those are in position. Um, maybe what's more interesting is that I can actually take the profile of these files. So I produce a plane, a um, offset plane here. So I do that roughly where I want to have these, uh, these models. I know the distance to the sketch. I then create an intersection between the mesh and that plane that I'm using. So this projected plane here. You can see that we are doing this on both files using the same plane. And we get a sketch here that you can see that we can use. So these are the intersection between the meshes that I scanned and the position that I chose and now we can start to redraw these lines and create a shape for that. But I'm not going to bore you with that, I'm going to speed up that footage so you can see that. So now I've designed all the parts, I've done some cool definition of different shapes and the next thing that we really want to do is to start extruding. So we'll extrude here, we'll do it in both ways. Make sure that we get a thickness of our part. Make sure we cover the screw holes. And I'm gonna speed this up as well because I'm basically thickening it up a few different parts. Also making it a bit stiffer because that's pretty weak the design we have now. We really need to have some thickerness in that. So there we have our finished design. I think it looks pretty good. We can just measure, measure some of the thicknesses. Make sure that we can fit it on our build plate. But it looks good. So with that said, let's get to the printer. Alright, and just for fun I'm gonna set up a simulation here. 
So I'm constraining the part where the screw holds and then I'm also adding a load on where the speaker will be mounted. So when the simulation is done, we can see here that we have well within our safety factors. We're using a plastic as a material, so it's not a perfect representation of our 3D print, but it's still pretty interesting to see that it's, it looks to be good enough. And uh, yeah, that's just a small verification. So now we can send it to the 3D printer. In our slicer here, which is Cura for the BCN Sigma, there's often an issue when you have parts like this. You see that they don't want to mix together. So in Cura, you can turn off a setting over here, which enables you to manually stack your models. So by that way, I can make sure that I can fit these parts a bit closer and we can start to print. I'm also putting in a lot of different settings here. You don't have to care about that. That's just for my specific model, material and printer. Alright, so that's it. Here's the end result. I think it looks good. It works really well. I could do some cable management, but I'll do that some other time. If you enjoyed this video and playing with all the different technologies like I do, scanning, printing, CAD, make sure you subscribe, ring that bell button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!